These are the new Nikon One cameras, a completely new system of cameras from Nikon. And as you can see, they're very compact. Uh, this is the Nikon J1, and this is the more advanced Nikon V1. They have very similar features. They both have a 10 megapixel sensor, and they both have the same processors, which are able to capture at full resolution an impressive 60 frames per second. Now, these cameras have a number of interesting features, but first, let's take a look at the key differences. As you can see on the more advanced V1, you've got a 1.4 megapixel electronic viewfinder. You've also got a better quality display on the rear. This one has a 920,000 dot resolution compared to the J1's 460,000 dot resolution. Also, as you can see here on the V1, there isn't a built-in flash. Instead, you've got a hot shoe mount so you can attach an external flash, a speed light, or a microphone. Uh, whereas on the J1, you have the built-in flash. Now there are a number of optional accessories and cases that you can get, and we'll take a look at some of those in a moment. But let's just take this V1 and take a look at some of the features that it has. Now one of those new features is the motion snapshot that you can access here. Now what that does is take a very slow motion shot short video clip and an associated still JPEG and when you play them back you get a very graceful and very smooth animated still. And then we have Smart Photo Selector. Now what this does is take a succession of 30 shots just before and just after you release the shutter. Uh, it will then whittle that down to what the camera thinks is the best five using a number of algorithms such as whether the subject is blinking or smiling or in focus for example and then you you can choose from those five which one you like the best and want to keep. And then you've got the photo mode. Now this camera is able to capture both RAW and JPEG images, or RAW and JPEG images at the same time. Uh, it has full manual control of all the uh, control, exposure controls that you'd expect, so that's aperture and shutter speed, and there's also full manual focus. And then you've got the video mode. Now this V1 and the J1 is able to capture full HD video, that's 1080p resolution. And whilst recording video, if you press this button here, you can also capture a still, and that's silently as well, so it won't interfere with the video recording. Now these cameras are going to launch towards the end of October and there are going to be four lenses available at launch. There's the 10 millimeter pancake lens as we can see here, then there's the 10 to 30 millimeter zoom, there's a 30 to 110 millimeter telephoto lens and finally there's the 10 to 100 millimeter lens here that's designed for video and it has the power zoom on the side for silent and smooth zooming when you are shooting that video. Video. Now there's also a speed light that's going to be available which will fit the V1 on its hot shoe mount here and there's also the stereo microphone that we saw launched earlier this year. Over the next three years Nikon says that there's going to be a series of lenses made available for this system camera and a number of other accessories. Now these are just conceptual ideas so they might not even make it to market but what we've got here is some kind of steady cam mount for uh, for shooting video so as you can see there's a, a lamp and a monitor that's about 50 percent larger than the one on the rear of the camera and then we have this lens mounted lamp uh, that would be great for illuminating subjects when you're shooting macro and here are a number of other accessories. So this one, for example, could fit to a hot shoe, be used as a projector, like on the PJ cameras from Nikon. This one is a joystick, not entirely sure what that would be used for. And this is a GPS adapter. And also this touchscreen device that could be used perhaps for annotating your projected images. Now the Nikon V1 is going to launch in glossy white as we have here and matte black. While the J1 is going to be available in a number of colours with matching coloured lenses. Now for details of the kits available and their prices and for more details on these cameras go to our website at witch.co.uk forward slash techdaily.
This is the new Nikon D800, the latest high-end digital SLR from Nikon, going on sale towards the end of March, and retailing for about £2,400 for body only. But what do you get for that money? Well, you get an incredible 36.3 megapixel sensor. So this camera really is designed for studio use where you want that incredible detail. So Nikon's taking on the likes of the medium format market with the launch of this. However, that comes at a price. Those photos that you take are gonna be huge with such a high resolution. Around 75, 76 megabytes per photo when shot in RAW in full frame mode. It's powered by the same X-Speed 3 engine that we saw recently on the Nikon D4, and that promises low noise in your photography and also a very fast speed. This camera should start up in around 0.12 seconds and is capable of shooting four frames per second in full resolution. But it's not just for still photography. This camera is also suited for broadcast quality video. It's able to shoot at full HD resolution, that's 1080p. And if you reduce that resolution down to 720, you can shoot at 50 and 60 frames per second, which is great for slow motion with detail and that video is also gonna sound great because you can monitor and adjust the audio through the camera itself on the 3.2 inch display on the rear. And that display is quite a smart display because it has an ambient light sensor integrated which is able to monitor the light levels that in the room that you're in and adjust the color and the brightness of the picture accordingly. Now despite housing a smaller capacity battery than previous models, Nikon says that this battery will actually last longer thanks to uh, improved efficiency of the camera. Nikon says it will get you around 900 shots per charge. Now in terms of memory cards, well you've got space here for both a compact flash card and an SD card and you can choose how the files are saved uh, in a number of different ways. So for example you could just use one as backup or you could use one uh, memory card format for video, the other for still photography for example, or you could use them as an overflow so once one is full it moves on to the other. Uh, there is also going to be a Nikon D800e version available for almost £300 more and that one will have the anti-aliasing filter removed which could introduce some false colours to your photography but should give you that extra level of detail. So only really advisable for people who have the time to adjust all the settings and really do know what they're doing. So that's the Nikon D800 digital SLR. For more details on this camera and for advice and full lab-based reviews of hundreds of digital cameras, go to our website at which.co.uk.